Wealth creation happens when people take risks and go into the marketplace with a business proposition and if they're successful, they can do very well. So for native title groups, the best chance of creating a future, an economic future for their people, is to create businesses. Most of our life we've worked for someone else. Um, now it's, it's the opportunities are there for us to work for ourselves and for our, for our fellow um, Aboriginal contractors, you know, who are out there. And nothing gives me more pride than to, than to go and work for another Aboriginal contractor or, or our own contracting companies. A statistic that not a lot of people know is that Aboriginal businesses employ between eight to ten times more Aboriginal people than non-Aboriginal businesses. So an Aboriginal business is a, an Aboriginal employment multiplier. So we all hope and that, um, you know, we start breaking that cycle of welfare dependency, of, of alcoholism. We want um, our kids and our kids' kids to become engineers and managers of some of these places. Well, most of our, my, my family was on settling payments. I mean, you know, you, you don't, you're just living from one paycheck to another, no? You get tired of just waiting for the royalties every year, so our family decided to um, get out and have a go and do, do our business. So it just started from an idea and it's, it's come this far now. Well, we took little steps at a time back in the beginning, about three, four years ago, and now we're up to where we are. And now we're going to try and um, bring all the kids in there and um, try and lead them the right way, you know, more or less get them away from welfare and all that and try and get them to be independent, you know, like work-wise. And there's a golden opportunity at the mine for them to start apprenticeships and uh, work in general. One of the things that um, Fortescue Metal has give, gave me the opportunity is, is um, becoming a joint venture. It's been a struggle, but it came along by talking and, you know, building that relationship with FMG. Um, now that we are on track, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a it's a it's a big big thing that happened to Nyambali people since you know since since mining ever started in 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 the Pilbara. A Fortescue Metal sort of they sort of had all that contract out there for Indigenous people to help help Indigenous people and um, try and develop their own business sort of skills. When we managed to get FMG to say, look, we want you to be part of our story. Um, we've got this billion opportunities here, you, but first and foremost, you've got to prove yourself. And they said, look, you know, here's the pathway that you must follow. And uh, if you need assistance in that process, please let us know. So FMG basically have eliminated the glass ceiling that we find when we deal with some other companies. FMG is the one that um, gave us the first golden opportunity, you know, and um, we are thriving in our business at the moment, um, but it's only early days at the moment, but um, having it going um, really well. When we got told that we were awarded this contract, it actually it took me some time for it to sink in. And um, I was driving home and, I, and it just dawned on me that, you know, I've been given this opportunity. I actually rang my mum and said, Mum, for the first time in my life, I'm so proud of myself. She says, what's wrong with you? <laughs> said, she's got five kids, and four of, four of the kids have all got two trade backgrounds, except for me. So here I am with no trade background, um, with my contract, running my own company. And when I rang the other ladies up, they was just in, in tears because what, what this can do also, not just for themselves, but for, for their family and extended family is just um, undescribed, you know, just, Awesome. It's a personal thing, it's just to sh show that anyone can do it, Indigenous people can do it as well as non-Indigenous people. I mean, I mean, there's all those bad things and said about, um, I don't go into too much details, but there's always the neg negative things. And now this is one of the biggest positive things you can actually put out there. And I've actually seen a change in one of my uncles, who was a person that never showered, a person that just continuously lived on drugs. I've seen him the other day spick and span in an FMG uniform. And I thought, who's this guy walking down the street? And it was my uncle and I was really proud. You know, five to six years time, 
You know, we'll have families most probably just living with one family, you know, where they're not overcrowding, where there's 10 families living in one house. I mean, we have a 54-year-old lady that's, you know, driving dump trucks and water carts that are 10 times the size of anything she's driven in her life. I had some people walk up to, to myself and, some, and the other ladies involved in, with REMS and they said, thank you very much. I said, what do you mean? She said, you're our role model. If you can do it, we can. So they're actually out there um, forming their own um, alliances with you know, companies, so it's awesome. There was a number of people who were working for us had been on CDP or unemployed, so they were on about $9,000 a year. And now on you know, between $100,000 and $140,000. You know, to see the smiles on their faces because Christmas is coming up, the, the wife's happy, the kids are happy, you know, there's, there's presents on the Christmas tree, there's plenty of food in the fridge, all, all the bills are paid. It was a life-changing moment for them. I think it was a life-changing moment for me to, as well to realise that, you know, if you want something significant and worthwhile to happen, there's a hell of a lot of work involved, but if you stick at it, the rewards are there. The returns to the native title groups are enormous because not only do their children get the opportunities of jobs, but they also uh, share in the profits of the companies and it gives people business experience so that more people can go and create a business. When people are able to participate in the economy in the same way that other Australians do, then their future generations are guaranteed uh, a reasonable standard of living. We've got a hundred staff all up. That includes back end and front end and our Indigenous um, employment rates. Uh, I think last time I checked it was about 67% and I was told by some that it was impossible and it's impossible with that attitude so I think this gets back to the billion you know dollars opportunity is it is a bad attitude if you say that is the goal then you need to do everything possible to achieve that so on my side it was getting the indigenous employment rate over 50 percent on FMG side it was about delivering the the you know the billion dollars worth of contracts to indigenous contractors and the two have basically complemented each other as we keep getting the work we can then start bringing up more indigenous workers we getting phone calls like every day. People are um, ringing up for work because they knew about this little contract gave thing going on. And all they want to do is get out and get a job and just start, just start up again. You know what I mean? Um, get something going. Um, I think they just just want to do something now. No? I actually been in a in, in a mining industry since I was 19. I'm 35 now, and it's it's good that this opportunity come up and we get that chance and we've been given the chance to do it. I reckon we can do it. In the future, when we um, cut out on our own, uh, probably, um, probably about 30, 40 um, employees, you know. But it's a, it's a long way out at the moment, but we're taking small steps to get there. And um, in the end, we'll have a bright, happy, sun, sun, sunny day, you know. And that's what we're looking forward for our family. One of the things that we want to be able to do is build and give other people opportunities that hasn't got any mining in their backyard. We want to be able to give everybody a chance in business. Well, a billion dollars has got to be real, right? So you can talk about whatever you want, and you know, there's a number of you know, people out there who've got you know, various um, comments to make about FMG in relation to its, in, you know, its Indigenous engagement, but as far as I can see, three years they've given out more contracts than you know, most of the other companies in Australia combined, so proof's in the pudding. Fortescue are probably one of the key ones in regards to, to touch on the word again, empowering um, small indigenous and in businesses to be able to be self-sufficient and get to the next level themselves. And I've not seen that before at all. I've never seen it in, in any, any other mining company around the world to be able to do that. And I think to be able to get them to a certain level to be able to stand alone, I think that's a huge feat that, that, and it's remarkable. A really key component of the Billion Opp Opportunities Program is the opportunities. It's not the billion. It's not the billion dollars. It's the opportunity. Got to create the opportunity for them to be able to get in there and actually prove themselves. And as I said to them, you'll know what you have to do to succeed, but you must deliver. This is business and you've got to deliver. I'd like to see one billion opportunities adopted Australia-wide. I think FMG's come up with a great model. What this model does is set out the good business principles that, that other corporations can adopt in their business relationships with Indigenous communities. And it's not just about uh, employing people, although that's 
a very worthwhile goal. It's also about making sure that Aboriginal businesses are, are treated on merit, but at all, are also at the same time not marginalised by the um, very onerous and necessarily onerous processes that are involved in tendering. Being born, you know, in the Pilbara, born and bred in the Pilbara, to get into a mining company was absolutely shocking until FMGs come along and it's just opened doors for training, employment, for, for people, you know, right across Australia more or less. It's just, a, it's amazing. And Andrew Forrest actually, when I thanked him, he actually came up and planted a kiss on my <laughs> forehead and said, I'm so proud of you, which you don't get to hear that as an Indigenous person. So, yeah.